This is the introduction to Brachiopod poster. Brachiopods were incredibly abundant in the past, with about 12,000 extinct species known so far. Today there are only about 300 living species. They are also known as lamp shells because some of their shells resemble ancient oil lamps. They only live in the oceans, usually preferring colder water, from deep ocean trenches to shallow coasts. Most brachiopods are pretty small, but the largest found so far was a foot in diameter. Brachiopods are characterized by a fleshy body inside two shells or valves that protect the animal. They have a coiled structure called a lophophore that they use to filter feed and extract oxygen from the water. Bryozoans also have, have a lophophore. They also have a fleshy stalk called a pedicle that they use to attach themselves to the seafloor. The lingulids use the pedicle to burrow. There are two groups of brachiopods. The articulates have a hinge connecting the two valves, similar to clams. Their valves are made of calcium carbonate. The inarticulates don't have a hinge and hold their shells together with just m muscles. Their shells are made of calcium phosphate and chitin, and they can usually be found attached to other things like articulate brachiopods. Brachiopods are one of the most abundant and diverse fossils in the Cincinnati. You can find them in every layer of strata from the top to the bottom of every hill cut or creek. The articulates are the most common and generally larger than the inarticulates. Brachiopods attach to hard surfaces with a pedicle so they won't get washed away. This lingula uses it to burrow. Some brachiopods are called inarticulates, which means they don't have a hinge between their shells. Instead, they cement one shell to a hard surface for protection. In other words, they don't have a bottom shell, so to speak. This photograph shows an inarticulate attached to a much larger articulate brachiopod. How do you tell if it's a brachiopod or not a bivalve? When viewed from the top, the two halves of a brachiopod shell are the same. When viewed from the side, the two brachiopod shells are different. This is looking from the side, they are not symmetrical. The top is much larger, the bottom is smaller. This is looking from the top down, it is exactly symmetrical. Left and right are identical. Mirror image of each other. Brachiopods use the feathery filter called a lophore to get food from the water. This is a picture of those filaments. And there's the pedicle the stomach, muscles that open and close, the shells. And the loaf of four, the shell shown with a gape or slightly open. So the, this is a photograph of uh, living brachiopods today. They look like clams, but they are completely different species. I'm going to give you a quick uh, close-up view of the mosaic photographs of brachiopods living and fossilized that were used for this poster. I'll mention that some brachiopods have very long, spiny-like structures sticking out of their shells. It has long wings. The edges are very, very long on that one. The back view. That's a living one with the loaf of four. The loaf of four sticking out. Here's a fossilized one with those spines. Most of them have been broken off. Imagine those being like a porcupine quill.
Here's a black and white illustration of the internal anatomy of a brachiopod, pinnacle valve, dictator muscle, stomach, loaf of four. Here's a picture of the outside shell illustration. Here are a few shown what it, they would have looked like when they were alive, some Paleozoic brachiopods. So they're resting on the seafloor. They have a pedicle valve that attach, attaches and burrows into the ground, uh, elevates them slightly off the surface. They open their shells and they suck in the, uh, the water and they filter out uh, the animals to eat, a little sea plankton. So they are filter feeders, and a loaf of four is filtering them out of the water. This is an ink illustration of the perfect symmetry that they have looking down from above, and also split down the center from looking at the back hinge. They're symmetrical that way as well, but when you see them from the side, they are not symmetrical at all. If you want to know more about Cincinnati Fossils, get out this book from your library, Cincinnati Fossils, by Richard A. Davis. And the Dewey numbers, 560-97719-Q85. You can, of course, buy the book as well at the uh, Natural History Museum Center downtown Cincinnati. Uh, I believe there's a new book coming out, a new volume uh, very shortly. And this is a black and white illustration of clams. They are not brachiopods and they are not symmetrical. That's plainly obvious that you cannot put a division line and get a mirrored symmetry anywhere along their axis. Here's a black and white illustration of the brachiopods and they are indeed have mirrored symmetry. This illustration shows a little bit of their uh, anatomy terminology. For instance, at the bottom illustration it shows their growth lines. That line that goes around the shell from when they were previously smaller. The inside of the shell, uh, top and bottom of the shell, you can see they have uh, indentations and looks like pop marks from where their um, the scars where the what are the muscles attach themselves that open and close the shell? You see some unusual shapes. Here's some of the uh, terminology for those. Now the first brachiopod I want to show you is called Zygospira. One of my favorites. It's very tiny. Here are this rock is just smothered with the, it was a Zygospira zone. That they're living plentifully in a community, and they're all buried together. One, they, uh, just the texture, all the little ridges, it's just a beautiful thing of beauty. And remember, these are many of these are smaller than a BB. I'll just scan over the rock, let you take a look at this with me. The camera itself is acting like a hand lens magnifying glass. And here's my finger for comparison on size. In part two of the video, I'll show you some, uh, you can find these seashells in rocks as well as free from the matrix, and they're uh, very loose. You can see that in part two. And the next brachiopod I want to show you is Raffinesquina, and it was named after a Frenchman. Unlike the other ones, which usually have Latin names, this was named after a Frenchman's last name. It is the largest brachiopod that we can find in the Cincinnati. And this is the, uh, the bottom shell on the inside of it. Here's the dental scars, these structures that stick out. Muscles held on to. Right next to it is the outer shell here. Here is the bottom half of the shell, the inside of the shell sticking up at you. And those things that are sticking out at the very top, these are the dental sockets, that which the uh, almost like a hinge. The 
abductor scars are those two pits, again where the muscles attach to open and close the shell.